Altai was dreaming. His cold lakes in the frame of rough rocks were like green blue eyes under the sky. At once, the ice dam crashed down and the old foothills disappeared. It took just minutes for water to sweep away everything and to change the landscape beyond recognition. The reason for these cataclysms was in fact high the mountains, in the giant lakes, that have no equals by the size nowadays. Ice-dammed lakes were always essential to great natural systems, which consist mainly of ice and snow. The study of it is the domain of glaciology, that is physiographic science about natural ice. Out of the snow that is collected for years in polar countries and at the high altitudes in mountains, special physical bodies are formed that are called glaciers. Briefly, a glacier could be determined as an ice flow of atmospheric origin. Glaciers can be different, from small, hillside, that can be seen at not very high mountains, to great, even colossal, as for example modern ice sheets of Antarctica and Greenland. Many scientists believe that not a long time ago, by the geological criterion, similar ice sheets covered a great part of North America and Eurasia. Altai is the largest region with glaciers in mountains in Russia right now. There are about 1500 glaciers in the catalog of modern Altai's glaciers, and the total area of them is almost 1000 kilometers. The content of ice is about 60 cubic kilometers. The comparison of rivers flowing off Altai mountains with glacier water volume shows that glaciers could replenish rivers with water for more than a year if there would be no other sources. Glaciers take less than 1% of Altai's territory and aggregate from 8 to 13% of the total river flowing volume. The largest so-called mountain valley glaciers are located on actual parts of moistest Altai mountains. At the remote areas of the highest ridges and at the tops of the middle mountain ridges, isolated groups of the so-called minor forms of glaciations are located. They exist because of snowstorms and high snow concentration at north and northeast mountain sides that are protected from the sun radiation in mountain shadows. Many of those microglaciers are right now at the limit condition of existence of glaciation. They, on the one hand, enlarge the area of glaciations and on the other, allow us to imagine the marginal conditions of glaciation. As for the morphology of Altai's glaciers, it is so diverse that it represents nearly all possible types of mountain glaciation on Earth, with few exceptions, like glaciers of volcanic cones, for example. The study of Altai's glaciers shows that at least from the middle of 19th century, they are constantly decreasing in volume. The largest glaciers have shortened in 1.5 kilometers since that time. At the beginning of the 20th century, two professors from Tomsk, Vladimir Obruchev and Vasily Sapozhnikov, discovered the geological traces of giant ice-dammed lakes in the largest intermountain basins of Altai, in the upper reaches of Chuya and Katun rivers. Obruchev and Sapozhnikov stressed that these lakes could appear as a result of blocking of water flow by the ancient glaciers and the hollow outfall. Now, the majority of all the lake's cavities are dry, but the huge angular lumps at their bottoms remind us about great icebergs that once drifted at those lakes. These processes are not related to the so-called normal geological process. It is a super catastrophic process to take all this material from somewhere, to get it to the top десятки, это здесь получается сотни километров, и потом э, сбросить. Но обвал здесь исключается, мы говорили с вами, достаточно далеко. Потом обвал, если бы это был обвал, то все бы вот эти э, глыбы были местными, то есть представляли бы обломки вот тех скал. А они, если посмотреть внимательно, с молотком пройтись, это вся геология Алтая выше по течению Катуни. Although the history of the ice dam lakes study is rather extensive, the main thing about these lakes was unknown until the end of the 20th century. Where and how did the water disappear from the lakes, which volume reached thousands of cubic kilometers? And what was the mechanism of these lakes emptying? Only a super splash, 
A catastrophic flow, which must have been much more powerful than modern mud flows, could possess the force capable of dragging these lumps. Glacial mud flows happen nowadays in the mountains too, but they definitely lack the power and are unable to move around such lumps, which appear to be too large and too numerous. Looking at this region from the height, we can see a large lump tail area. This tail continues to the other side of Katun. The hypothesis of glacial origin of these lumps was rejected. They don't seem to be starved sediments because of their big size and the shape, which is not rounded. To all appearance, there are no modern glaciers that have a tongue covered by similar lumps. These lumps have the verges that are too sharp and they are rounded only by wind. At the end of the 20th century, it was proved by Tom's glaciologists that all these giant hollow lakes were emptied catastrophically by breaking through the ice dams. In the process of catastrophic emptying of these lakes, colossal volumes of water rushed down instantly by the geological criterion through the valleys of Altai's rivers. They have totally changed the initial surface. Speed of some of these abrupt glacial superfloods could attain 40 meters per second and their volumes millions of cubic meters per second. It exceeds by far the volume of the largest modern rivers. Although the power was great, duration of these cataclysms wasn't long. For example, the peak of superflood of Hayachuya lasted for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, the geological work that was done is comparable with the work of the river Ob for the period of 30 years. Such catastrophes kept happening as the glacial hollows were being filled with water from the melting ice, and the stream of such power couldn't just disappear without leaving their trace. One of the most exotic results of these floods is the relief of the so-called giant current ripples. This is an exact mold of the ripples of modern streams and rivers, but hundreds of times larger, and composed not of sand, but of the rough pebble and boulders. The height of several ridges of these ripples attains 20 meters. The field of ripple landscape in the Kurai Basin is considered now to be one of the most spectacular fields of giant ripples in the world. Here, at the bottom of the basin, it is possible to reconstruct the giant water whirlwind that was generated here at the peak of the flood by just using the orientation of the ripples. Its radius is more than 10 kilometers and it could be compared with water cycle of the Arctic basin. Such relief was discovered in the North America at the beginning of the 20th century and it was considered to be a characteristic of this continent in particular. American scientists that worked in Altai were amazed by the resemblance of Columbia Basal Plateau relief and this one in Altai. Meanwhile, in all mountain regions on Earth, where the glaciers exist, there always were catastrophes, hardly any weaker than some earthquakes known to mankind. Ice dammed lakes were appearing during the period when huge glaciers moved out to the valleys of drainage. These glaciers were blocking the valleys, leading to the appearance of the enormous lake bodies. The reasons for the glacial expansion were natural, climatic. As for the reasons of destruction of these ice dams, they were purely mechanical. The floating of the dams or thermal erosion. After catastrophic emptying of the ice dam lakes, glaciers, in accordance with the climatic conditions, were starting to move again to the arterial valleys. And everything was happening again until change of climatic conditions. This is how the Earth climatic machine works. И то, что мы сейчас вообще видим в долинах, ну, в частности, Алтая, Чуи, Катуни, Би, и в Туве, это Енисея, Верхний, там, Малый и, и, и так далее, мы видим все-таки следы работы этих катастрофических суперпаводков веков, последних причем, потому что предпоследние там какие-то, они, вероятно, либо перекрыты, либо уничтожены, вот, и так далее. И это обращает на себя внимание. Like these terraces, which can create many legends only by their appearance, they resemble strange, handmade constructions with clear-cut geometric forms created by an unknown artist for the purposes unknown as well. They are not the river terraces that we are used to. The main difference is the huge size and unusual for the mountain's structure, finely grained, often not rounded deposits with very clear, almost horizontal layering. Но очень хорошо видно, что это тонко обломочный материал, еще и не окатан. Это щебень, дресва, мелкая дресва. 
Вот. Куда впаяны крупные валуны и глыбы, такие даже гораздо больше. И трудно себе представить обычную значит, среду, среду осадка накопления, которая одновременно накапливалась бы и вот тонкообломочный материал, и огромные гигантские глыбы. Ну а здесь, тем не менее, именно так оно и происходит. If we compare modern fluvial deposits with material of which these high-altized fluvial terraces consist, we will see some principal differences. It can be explained by the work of superfloods that have no analogues on Earth. This is one of the rare cases when the work of a powerful flow was not destructive, but creative. То есть в определенных условиях, в так называемых зонах эрозионной тени, где скорость этих паутков резко падала, они сбрасывали весь тот материал, весь тот, скажем, мусор, который, которым они были насыщены. Мы его видим. Мы его видим здесь, вот, э, и мы видели поверхность террас в, в районе Ини, вот, и ве, это можно все увидеть во всех крупных долинах Горного Алтая, на Катуне, на Чуе и по Енисею. То же самое, кстати говоря, можно увидеть э, в долинах э, штатов Монтана, Кола, Колорадо, э, в Северной Америке. It was the entire world's geological community that reacted to the discovery of unusual geological formations, and not only America that had lost the status of the unique relief honor. Several international expeditions worked in Altai, and by now this phenomenon has been studied rather thoroughly, mainly owing to the international scientific cooperation that had developed in the 90s, and mostly because of that united effort, the world, on the threshold of the 21st century, has uncovered another great mystery. Geomorphologists and specialists of the comparative planetology discovered the analogues of the Earth hydrospheric catastrophes on other planets. Rectilinear canals on Mars are similar in structure to the valleys of some Earth currents with typical bed forms, but are much bigger. They reach up to 2,000 kilometers in length, being hundreds of kilometers wide. They have only a few tributaries and are separated from each other by hundreds of kilometers. Martian floods are more ancient than those on Earth. These catastrophic floods transformed the surface of Mars more than a billion years ago, when the climatic conditions on Mars were absolutely different. The real events of the Earth history often turn out to be much more fascinating than science fiction, and the theory of glaciers could obtain a new, non-terrestrial perspective. The mankind has a chance to learn new, unexpected facts about the glacial period, about the catastrophes in the hydrosphere. And maybe through these discoveries the legend of the deluge could obtain a real base, so it wouldn't be just a story.